shop dickery this is actually worthwhile we're learning something we didn't know which is how little it takes to pop a part out of your vise so without uh, further something something gentlemen welcome back to the shop today treat especial as witnessed by my lab coat and white glove operation not the least reason being colder than shit in here there's the steel ones what come with device aluminium and copper we're gonna see which one holds the best which material holds the best in order to do that I got to get some hydraulics going uh, we're gonna we're gonna jam a small cylinder in there we're gonna clamp it down we're gonna see how much force well pressure it takes to pop the workpiece out quite aptly Prudence the safety goat beginning her bleeding as every safety personnel must safety through endless incessant bleeding of course when I when you anthropomorphize a inanimate object long enough eventually she starts to grow on you so I got her a, uh, a companion here not to worry he identifies as a goat Jesus, what's the scapegoat bleating on about now? As it happens, I was ruminating on provisioning a qualified safety officer here for the Empire of Dirt when Prudence's incessant bleeding in the skeezy section of the bazaar caught my ear. The local trader assured me that she'd be a fine and uh, faithful pocket pussy I wasn't convinced on her sizing, but local flavor being what it is, he assured me she was halal on the farm and haram in the barn. It heartens us that we've saved dear Prudence from a life of ill repute. At the same, having traveled extensively for work, I would never disparage local custom with generations of tradition. The Welsh are well known for their unconventional animal husbandry. The embodiment of the experiment requires us to have some, despite having our, our standard protocol of n equals 1, which sets it distinctly in the anecdotal range, at least we'll have some data which is far better than what's available now, which is no data. So we're, what we're going to do to get some repeatability, we're going to put one of these Chinesium Enterpack cylinders, this is just a knockoff, cheap like borscht from the usual scumbags, We'll clamp it in here, give this a set torque, and then see if we can get a little bit of repeatability, stiction being what it is. And not for no reason we chose the Enterpack 51, RC51 uh, this would be, because the effective area on the backside of the Pistone is one square inch. Uh, maybe a, a blonde one, shy of one square inch, but for our intents and purposes, not a problemo. Which means that whatever force we put on here on the vise, we will directly be able to read off what that pressure is and, and not have to do any kind of mental mathematics. Of course, uh, numeracy being what it is today. Okay, so this vice, it's a 3600 V. Why the 3600 V and not the 600? Because it's ground on the one side. Uh, this, according to the spec sheet, if I recall, and this is an important number, so I do recall, 40 foot-pounds of torque on here gives you 3,000 pounds of clamping force. Now this is a five ton cylinder, which means it's uh, 714 stone. Now I'm unit agnostic, so that's 10,000 pounds. <laughs> a little jab at the continental types there. 45 kilonewtons. Mass is not force, so I'm not going to tell you how many kilograms. It's 45 kilonewtons. If in my math, uh, some pedant will correct me if I'm wrong. They always do. What are we doing? We're going to clamp the shit out of this. 40 foot pounds. Jesus, this guy won't stop talking. We're going to see what kind of pressure we get. Pump it up, homeboy. Just don't stop. Baculum fully extended. We use our torque wrench set to 40 pounds feet, 40 foot pounds, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And we're going to crank this down until she clacks. And then we'll read the pressure off on the gauge. For some reason, I feel like I should be engaging my safety squints. Okay, so she just clacked over. However, 
we got air in the system, we got sticky seals, we got thread form, we got all sorts of weird, what you call that, friction happening. We're going to fix that with a little tap, tap, tap. That's just going to knock free any stiction, and then we're going to give her again. You'll see, well, hopefully, you'll see that we do indeed get a little extra turn out of her. Yeah. Okay, we're there. Now, the gauge, a little bit dirty. It's almost like it gets used in a shot. Oh, that doesn't help. Um, we are reading 20... 200 pounds of clamping so it's either overrated from Kurt or we got something problematic going on I'll tell you what we'll do we'll crank her up to 80 foot pounds on the torque wrench see what she reads and then we'll draw a little line betwixt the two sort of extrapolate from there now at 80 foot pounds we are looking at 48 4600 PSI, which means that vice is putting out roughly 4,600 pounds of force. So either the vice is overrated or uh, we got another issue. But not a huge deal because as we see, it's linear. Now, I'm not jumping all over, Kurt. I, I like this vice. You know, maybe they overrate it a little bit. Yeah, you know, who doesn't, right? Marketing in this day and age. Also, just to put some uncertainty in the mix there. This gauge was last calibrated never. So there you have it. It's just dicking around in the shop. So, and sample size one. So don't go too fucking bananas. Now we could take this cylinder and just crank her up until she pops out. But that's a painted surface. We got to get rid of the paint. And also I want to use different test coupons against that parallel jaw. You see how there's only, there's but 200 thou holding her together. I want to test that part of it uh, in actual fact. So we got to give this cylinder a little wee haircut. Uh, I could run back and stick her in the Bridgeport. Uh, luckily, I got just the Cockford Ollie here. We can run this CNC in Bridgeport mode. No programming or nothing, just use the DRO. I got to take 220 thou off, so I'm going to do that on either side. Hopefully, that's enough meat so we don't leak hydraulic oil everywhere. And we're just gonna jog lock and run this right across. Skim the face. We got our Z-depth, we'll start the spindle, 200 ripples. We'll fire up the coolant. Hit the jog lock on the X uh, negative, and away we go. Real conservative cutting and slow feed right here. Yeah, it ain't too big. CNC makes it easy. It hit a couple buttons and it pops out parts all day long. Fucking piece of shit. Gland popped Ray right Oliver. Pop the fucking gland and clean off. Look. I come close to that in high school, but sh this thing's proper dickered. Like a tiny little Milron got in there and chowdered her right to fuck. Nothing for it, I'm afraid. We gotta go in bareback. We angel, stray angel hair peeking out the bottom of the bikini. A little disconcerting, but as long as we don't have any mermaids, we're okay. Now we're getting there, getting to some results. Of course, I'd like to put this right squaw in the middle. Unfortunately, I've been my rod. You see that? No room at all for some scoop confactant. So this thing's going to get abutted so that it's indexed at the same time. Okay, now we got the dick in the vise. We're going to test it. First, some kindergarten kinetics, kinetics, dianetics, statics. Okay, remember I said we had at 40 foot pounds of torque uh, that that inclined plane wrapped around this cylinder ends up giving us 2200 pounds of force that's normal force and we're talking physics now that's a normal force so the force to get that to pop out is going to be the normal force multiplied by the coefficient of friction which in this case i don't know what it is it might be a 0.5 so that means 2200 times 0.5 gives us 1100 pounds this should pop out at. Hold on though, remember the engineer's friend, zero. This is not accelerating anywhere. That means that the forces need to be balanced, which means that the clamping of 2200 pounds has two normals. It has one on this side because it's not flying out, right? So 
when you're clamping something, you have two normal forces, which 2200 multiplied by two is 4400 multiplied by the coefficient of friction, 0.5 say, and we will get to that experimentally. So I would say this is going to pop out at 2200 pounds, dead reckon. Got the workpiece, torqued down 80 foot pounds and slapped with the old dead blow. We got a indicator just to show us when it's going to move. And we got a Chinesium GoPro watching the whole works. I'm going to be monitoring the gauge to see at what point it pops out of the vise. Whoa, and she popped out at fuck all. Wow. Wow. Incredible. So we need a different gauge. Another goal we'll give her. I cleaned her up good and proper again. Ah, uh, changed the gauge to a lower, just a thousand pissy gauge. Here's the thing. Any kind of instrument what uses hooks relies on hooks law to, uh, to gauge, you know, like a fish scale or a torque uh, wrench. Anything that relies on spring force to give you a measurement. The thing is, materials are directly proportional only in one uh, range at the that's why you never want to use a gauge at its low end because it's not accurate because there's some there's some uh, non-linearity there in the spring itself and of course uh, this kind of gauge is a Borden tube which is a differential spring larger surface area on the outside than the inside you put pressure to it and it uh, erects okay let's give this a go Nice and slow mind. 400. 500 pounds. And she's starting to move a little bit. Just some stress, strain rather. 600 pounds. She's moving pretty good there now. Here's what the gauge looks like. At 500 pounds. And that's all we got is 600 pounds and it's moving. And then drops right down. We're moving right out of the vise. Come right off of the parallels there, you can see. We're gonna give her another go just for, yeah, repeatability's sake. We're at 400 pounds. Five hundred pounds. And she's moving. Oh, we blew the seals. Just for our edification, is measure that bore. Uh, the RC51, the actual enter pack, should have a bore of 1.2, right? For a one square inch. This guy, 1.12, sorry, 1.12. This guy, yeah, quite a bit bigger. So you half that, that's... Oh, fuck it. I don't know. That's going to be 50%. Probably going to be 50% because you got to square the radius. 50% more effective area on that guy. So that's where our discrepancy came in with the clamping force. Now we're off by 100. Fuck it. I'm going for it. I just, don't be silly. I'm just going to send it. All right, you fucking fucks. I don't like me and you don't like me either. But this, as opposed to our usual shop dickery, this is actually worthwhile. We're learning something we didn't know, which is how little it takes to pop a part out of your vice. So, without uh, further something, something. Ah, fuck, it moved at fuck all. I reviewed the tape. Near as I could tell, she started slipping at 400 PSI on the gauge with a one and a half inch effective diameter on that piston square inches. That puts us right at, what, 600 pounds of force, which is in a huge machine like this. Absolutely fuck all. Once again, for the second time, same test, only changed a variable. Well, two variables, full disclosure, we'll get to that. 6061 T6 aluminum soft jaws versus the, where are you? The copper. And of course the test indicator has moved position, but you'd be hard pressed to tell me that it's gonna move in one plane and not affect that either way you look. It, once it starts to go, it's, it's going. Higher coefficient of friction between aluminum on aluminum. So we should conceivably see more 
force before it starts to move. And looks like we're moving there now. What are we at? Call it 700 PSI plus 350. We're at 1,000 pounds of pull-up. A little bit more reasonable. We'll do the test again, reset everything, and see if we get the same result. As well, if you're going to use this data for your dissertation, make sure that your advisor does not see this because we're 100 off on the gauge to begin with. But oranges to oranges, we just compare the ultimate number and not worry too, too much. We'll get in the ballpark. So this is where it failed last time. And she's moving there now. Yeah, gonzo. So I would call that 800 there, minus the 100, since we pegged out the gauge around 700. So about 1,000 pounds, 1,000, 1,200 pounds or thereabouts to make that piece flail out of the vise. So aluminum soft jaws, far superior to copper soft jaws. All right, now we got the factory jaws, steel. Oh, that. <laughs> Pay no attention. There are two kinds of sailors in the world. Those who have run aground and those who lie about running aground. Now, I'm not a machinist. I do LARP one on the internet on occasion. I would be willing to bet there's also two kinds of machinists in the world. Start to move. Yeah. Oh, what are we looking at here? Right around 800. We'll reset the test, reseed everything, clean it up, and try again. Steel jaw on aluminum workpiece. Test the second. I have a feeling she'll, uh, she'll let go at around 800. Yeah, she's starting to let go there. Needle's moving a little bit. What do we got? 800, 900, just starting to let go a little bit. Yeah, and we're let go there, but it's not catastrophic. At, uh, what's that, 1,000 minus the 100, 9, yeah. So comparably, looks like steel on aluminum is the best, which is counterintuitive because it's well, it's been a while since I cracked a book, but it seems to me that aluminum on aluminum has the highest uh, coefficient of friction. And the steel on aluminum is a little bit lower, so there's some sort of effect going on there. These tests, wow, I can't believe how little force it takes to knock that workpiece right out. So I will be tightening the ever-living fuck out of every single vice I ever come across. Scary. Especially when you think on the breakthrough of a drill now you're pushing the drill feed in so it's pushing the workforce uh, workpiece down into the vise but then as you break that last chip as you're breaking through now you just have those two little dingle arms and they want to pull up on the part uh, you know you get some grease and stuff in there a thousand pounds goes to 500 right quick fast in a hurry and you get the old helicopter effect. Myself included, the happily married men in the crowd will come as no surprise that we know a thing or two about friction. We're mainly eliminating it, but in this case, we're going to increase the friction of the diction by doing some tricks to her. Huh? So in the next video, or future video, I'll be testing some soft jaws with a couple of little special modifications. See if we can't get that chooch factor up. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vice. And for Jesus' sacks, tighten her right the frig up, too. Like store bought, lads, you can muddle through a lot of turd sandwiches with foul language and a grinder. Let's give her a test out. Oh, for the love of. Fact! Another trick worth its weight in gold. You get the next size up, Torx.